Hi everybody. Now today is a pretty cloudy and horrible day really. Uh, so let's work on the inside. And more precisely, uh, we are gonna work on my little PWM solar charge controller. Now as you can see the battery is nearly reached the float voltage. Uh, of course there's no load on it. Uh, of course there's no sun so really uh, this is just um, charging uh, and uh, well I'm gonna work today on another charge controller which is actually this the same as that one but I'm gonna build this right here on the breadboard and show everything is involved as I go now one thing I wanna say is that it would completely make sense to power the LM324 and the triangle wave oscillator directly from the 12 volt power supply. Well, because the LM324 can go all the way up to 32 volts, I think, and it is perfectly fine with a 12 volt battery. But actually, in doing this, there are some downsides, and I'll tell you what they are. Now, of course, the first is that. Uh, as the voltage, as we power the LM324 with more voltage, its power consumption increases. So really, by powering it, for example, with a 12 volt power supply, we get a current draw of about 800 mil microamps. And if, if, for example, we power it just from 5 volts, we have 600 microamps. And, you know, that's pretty, you know, you can we can easily save 200 microamps by powering it with a lower voltage but that's something more important and it is that the triangle wave generator circuit and the general LM324 is uh, you know it's an op amp so it's very sensitive to voltage uh, fluctuations and noise on the power line so really, if you, for, if you, for example, connect like a inverter uh, or, you know, a buck converter, boost converter, wherever you want on the battery that uh, causes noise, well, really, the LM324, the triangle wave generated is going to change in frequency and it's going to be, you know, everything is going to be kind of messed up. So really, the way to ensure a stable working is by powering it through a regulated power supply. And that's when this component comes in. Well, you might be able to just see it from here. I don't know if the camera can actually focus. But this is a very, very standard um, 7805. Uh, actually, this is a 78L05. That's just a standard 5 volts regulator. And as you can see on if the camera can focus. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, on this side of the circuit, I actually have a 12 volt uh, power supply. And on here, I have a 5 volt power supply. So this is really handy because everything that needs a regulated power supply is going to be powered from this line. And everything that is going to, well, needs to receive the voltage of the battery is going to be powered from this power line. So let's start. Now I have to say one more thing uh, about uh, the 7805 because uh, if we actually measure the quiescent current of the voltage regulator, we have uh, a current consumption of about 2.5 milliamps with no load. And you know, that's a bit of a problem really, is it? Because uh, if the circuit draws one milliamp and just the voltage regulator uh, draws 2.5 milliamps, well, the power consumption increases. And uh, we can get away with this problem, but we'll have to change the voltage regulator. Now, Julian used in his design, uh, I think the LP2950 voltage re regulator, which is actually a 5 volt voltage regulator as mine, but his is an LDO voltage regulator. Uh, let me just find a data sheet for it. So here it is, Texas Instruments part, and uh, straight away in the features we have, uh, let me find it, extremely low quiescent current. So really, 
Uh, and if we scroll all the way down, we should see some dates. Uh -huh. uh, actually, it calls it ground current, but it's actually the um, quiescent current of the AC. And for the LP2950, we have a typical value of 75 microamps, as you can see, microamps. So really, that's um, that's very good. So I think I'm gonna order some LP2950 uh, from uh, you know eBay or Farnell, and uh, you know they're extremely cheap. We are talking about uh, I think 30 or 40 uh, pence each. So really, uh, I have no downsides to uh, ordering like uh, 20 or 30 of them. Really. So really, uh, once we have our 5 volt regulator, uh, we have another problem really, because the uh, square wave that we get out on pin 1 of the LM324 is no longer switching between 0 and 12 volts, but is actually switching because between 0 and uh, 5 volts. So oscilloscope to the rescue. I'm on a scale of uh, 2 volts per division on channel 1 and let me just probe the output uh, uh, oh we get nothing um, what's happening oh of course <laughs> there's no power connected okay I've just connected a 9 volt battery uh, now of course because it's not very practical to have a big lead acid here so 9 volt alkaline battery and let me probe the first output here and we have a very nice square wave which uh no let me just hit measure uh the amplitude is of course we have an amplitude of 3.6 volts so really there are some losses in the lm324 because we lose um, well, about 1.5 volt really but that shows the problem we want a square wave which goes between 0 and 12 and we have one that goes from 0 to 3.6. So we'll have to fix this. And the way we're going to fix this is with this uh, charge pump driver circuit. Now as you can see it's a very simple circuit. We just have two transistors, two resistors and one diode. So let me show you um, how this circuit works. Now first, uh, let's suppose here the output is 0 volts. If the, out if the input is 0 volts, well this transistor is not going to turn on. So current won't flow here. And so this transistor is going to be polarized through this 330k resistor and is going to allow current to flow from the 12 volts to this point here. Now of course this uh, diode is going to be between really a 12 volt and a 12 volt signal so it's not gonna even exist uh, in the circuit but if the input here is 5 volts well this transistor is gonna turn on this transistor is not gonna be on because it's pulled to ground so this transistor is on and current can flow from this point here through the diode to ground so actually we have pulled this point here to ground and we feed this point into the capacitor that we actually use as the uh, voltage doubler capacitor. Now the very nice thing is that we are just using two NPN transistors which are exactly the same as the one we will use in the eyesight driver circuit. So really we can just uh, make a circuit with all NPN transistors which is very very nice. And um, uh, I want to tell you something because if we have three transistors here and two here, we have, we have a total of five transistors. And uh, well, you, we could use five discrete transistors, but I think I've kinda, I found a better solution for this. And the solution is here. This is a CA3083. And what this is, is actually a five NPN transistor array. So rather than having five different transistors, we can just use this IC, which basically includes five transistors inside and, you know, save five components. But really, I have decided to use just a discrete transistor in the circuit because it's a, a lot easier to see 
uh, where um, you know how the circuit is arranged and of course a very very nice thing about this transistor is let me just zoom in and actually they are marked the pins are marked so we have emitter base and collector I mean just a nice thing I mean it makes uh, experimenting and testing very very easy and I've just connected a one microfarad capacitor uh, as the charge pump and well my two diodes and a 2.2 microfarads I think uh, tantalum capacitor and uh, just gonna use my multimeter and probe the output and we see on our multimeter we have 14.86 volts now of course that seems low but keep in mind that we are powering it with a fairly discharged 9 volt battery so let me just switch to a 12 volt uh, uh, supply and we'll see the difference so I just connected a very old will have botched in a very old uh, three cell lipo battery and uh, we have an output from our charge pump uh, circuit of 21.6 volts now, of course this is from the uh, ground line so if I actually connect the ground of the multimeter actually to the positive of the battery well we have uh, a voltage of 9.7 let me switch to 20 volts 9.93 volts so really this is more than enough to turn on a MOSFET without problems so really in this video I should have talked about the um, eyesight driver circuit using three transistors but I think that I have made the right decision to spend a few words on this circuit arrangement because now that we have our LM324 configured uh, to produce a nice uh, triangle wave and our charge pump driver with a very strong uh, output voltage well and of course a very nice regulated uh, power supply I think uh, uh, we have everything we need to make the high side driver which is actually the trickiest part in the circuit and uh, I'll talk to you about this in my next video so stay tuned for that and we'll see you in uh, well, two or three days. <laughs> Bye.